Hi everyone, I'm Rosemary Miller here with Brian Vindig, the president of MJP Wealth Advisors, here to discuss the Federal Reserve Policy Meeting. Thank you so much for joining me today, Brian. Thank you, Rosemary. So, Brian, the Fed indicated that inflation is still too high for comfort, but they're sticking with the three rate cuts this year. How should we be looking at this? Yes, the announcement today from the Fed, I think, was encouraging because Chairman Powell eased some concerns about inflation and how it started this year at a little bit hotter than expectation and commented that those uh, those rate, th those levels of inflation really didn't give uh, too much concern to the FOMC and actually are taking into account some seasonal adjustments that are still going to flow through inflation over the balance of the year. So keeping three cuts uh, on the table while at the same time talking about the economy uh, being stable with a stable labor market and then meeting their dual mandate, I think really was a relief to investors today. Yeah, and I'm curious about that. So the data in the Fed statement, it did seem kind of bullish on the direction of economic growth. What does that mean for investment strategies? I think based on today's statement, it really supports the point that this year, the market's going to come back to the fundamentals. If we assume from a macro level that inflation will come down on a sequential basis month over month, and the Fed is keeping those three rate cuts on the table, then really the power of supporting markets growing higher over the course of the year is going to come back to earnings. And I think with the fact that we could have um, a stable economy, growing earnings, um, and we've seen uh, earnings outlooks for 2024 expected to grow somewhere around 9 to 11% on average. I think today's comments help to support um, you know, good news, both on those macroeconomic uh, uh, perspectives, but also you know, supporting the fundamentals and supporting the, the market, maybe having a chance of broadening out in some areas. Well, do you think with the Fed kind of focusing on its balance with the sheet reduction and, and what implications do you think this has for investors, particularly in terms of asset allocation and portfolio management? Yeah, that's a great question. Asset allocation has obviously been, been something that's been a hot topic over the last couple of years, especially in 2022, when we saw that both stocks and bonds were down double digits. And with interest rates being at the levels that they are, cash almost seems to have been an asset class that clients and investors uh, have been using uh, quite frequently over the last 12 months. But I think with when you think about a growing earnings environment and also that the economic backdrop is a little bit more favorable this year, I think you know when we think about asset allocation, having that mix of equities between both growth stocks, um, thinking about the innovative trends there, uh, paired with still value, balance sheet, cash flow focus, smaller company focus, makes a lot of sense for us on the equity complex side. And, and we've been um, uh, still reminding investors that fixed income does have a place uh, in your portfolio, especially when considering rates coming down over the balance of the year sequentially with inflation. Well, since the Fed began tightening its policy two years ago, how have consumer rates and borrowing costs changed and what strategies can individuals employ to navigate these shifts? Well, I guess it depends on what side of the uh, spectrum we are, Rosemary, on, on uh, spending versus savings, right? We know that the higher interest rate environment has definitely caused some volatility in the housing sector, mortgage application sector, and other lending sectors uh, in general. Uh, however, on the savings side, you know, higher rates really have re rewarded savers in replenishing uh, emergency funds, uh, capturing higher savings rates at home, as well as uh, just looking at the overall fixed income market in general. You don't have to go out very far in duration um, to get high, high uh, yields for high quality uh, issued debt, both in the municipal as well as the corporate space. So I think, you know, moving forward, as we as we go through this rebalancing of policy decisions that were made uh, four years ago as an effort to fight the impact of inflation, I think we're going through this rebalancing through all asset classes over the course of the year. So moderation in rates might help to support um, real asset uh, values, uh, again, in housing and some other areas of the real estate market help to support the bond market, as I mentioned, and also for those equities that really didn't participate in 2023 and are growing earnings uh, this year should be supportive as well um, for other parts of the equity complex outside of mega cap tech. 
Well, how can individuals stay informed and adapt their financial strategies in response to on- ongoing changes in Fed policy and economic indicators? Well, I think the first thing, just to keep it really simple, is just ask yourself, do you have a budget at home? Uh, do you have a plan? Do you set goals both on a short-term or long-term perspective so that as policy changes or rates change or some of these other things that impact all of our, our lives, um, you can go back to that plan and adjust and, and navigate and, and, and assess whether or not uh, you're on track or recognizing that there are trade-offs in our decisions and, and see where those trade-offs lie so that you can make the most efficient and effective decisions moving forward. Well, looking ahead, what key factors should investors monitor to anticipate future shifts in Fed policy and their potential implications for financial markets? Definitely. I, I think um, that's a great question. You know, when we think about ways to stay informed, um, we have to think about it in a couple different ways. The first is, um, you know, the Federal Reserve meets on a, on a calendar, uh, published calendar basis throughout the years. So there's there's several meetings that happen over the course of the year. And when they make their policy decisions, that's one way to stay up on what's happening with interest rates, what's happening with the economy. The same is said for publicly traded companies because they issue earnings usually every 90 days. So, you know, tuning in, listening to what companies are saying about the economy and the consumer and other areas of the market is another good way uh, to stay informed. But I think also just, you know, focusing in on, you know, what's what's going on with, you know, your own personal cash flow at home uh, and, and looking at, you know, how much am I making uh, at work, what are you know opportunities that are happening both in the job and the real estate market, and measuring that back to what you're actually spending your money on, so that so that as you look at your own savings rate, you can actually apply that relative to some knowledge that you're gaining in staying informed in some of these other areas. Brian, is there anything else on your radar regarding today's Federal Reserve meeting that you believe should be on ours? Yeah, I think I think it's really interesting um, that in the way that the market sometimes behaves to data points, and we've seen uh, a lot of reaction to some of these headline numbers. And I think what the Federal Reserve reminded us today is that they're going to take a cautious and deliberate uh, tone in the way that they approach uh, making changes to policy. And I think that's important as well for investors, where it's not just about one piece of information, but it's an accumulation. Of, of, of multiple pieces of, of data to be able to make an informed decision. And I think that's the way um, investors should think about things over the next couple of months as we, again, continue to move through these adjustments in different sorts of policy decisions using the Federal Reserve as, as just a great example. Thank you so much for joining me today, Brian. Uh, thank you as well.